Hello and welcome to BlogJam Hackathon and to this presentation about understanding token standards and NFTs. In this presentation, we'll talk about ERC20, ERC721, ERC1155 and NFT. And don't worry if you don't understand all of these uh, acronyms right now. I will get to it and explain uh, each of them. So let's get started. Let me introduce myself first. So my name is Daniel Kmak. I work in developer relations in Nervous Network. I'm mostly responsible for the technology side of things, for making sure that our tooling uh, works well uh, for developers, and we have our layer two optimistic rollup, which is EVM equivalent, and anyone can deploy their applications on it. And uh, it's just normal Ethereum, dApps written for, for Ethereum just work because all the tooling works. I'm a blockchain developer since 2017. Previously, I worked for Ethereum alarm clock, Polymath, so it was security tokens and Energy Web Foundation, where I was building Renewable Energy Certificates Marketplace. So on the agenda today, we'll talk about what is ERC in general. We will also talk about the ERC20 standard. Obviously, you might have already heard of it. I think it's one of the, I think it's the most popular standard in Ethereum. We'll also talk about ERC721, which is the most popular standard for NFTs. And then we'll talk about ERC1155, um, which allows you to mine both fungible and non-fungible tokens. So, But we'll talk about it uh, at the end of this presentation. So first, let's talk what is ERC. So ERC stands for Ethereum Request for Comments. And basically, RFCs, Request for Comment Documents, are a form of collaboration in open source projects. So Ethereum is open source project, and, it's, um, and anyone from the community can, can introduce Ethereum Improvement Proposal, which is called EIP. And then um, there's a debate. People um, people argue about what's what's the best for the network, and then your proposal may pass and be implemented as a standard and be accepted as a standard in Ethereum community. So basically, these ERCs, Ethereum Request for Comments, are just standards that were accepted by wide Ethereum community and uh, they are recommended to be used uh, if you are building applications because in Ethereum Ethereum uh, because in Ethereum RFCs are mostly used for application level standard and conventions there ERC is a subset of Ethereum improvement proposals uh, which are called EIPs and EIPs have also like many other categories, like there could be proposals that improve networking or protocol, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if we take a look, if we take a look, uh, if we go to eips.ethereum.org slash ERC, we'll be able to see all ERCs that are in final stage that were accepted by the community. We have our ERC20. We see when it was created. You can see what this, what this document is actually about, what the standard is actually about. And it's the same also for, for other ERCs. But uh, as, as I said, ERC is only a subset of Ethereum improvement proposals because you also have like core networking interface meta and uh, informa informational
So now let's talk about what is ERC-20. So ERC-20 is a way of representing fungible tokens. So tokens that are equal to each other. And this is perfect for a currency in your game. For example, if you have gold, because each coin, like if you have one gold, it's always equal to one gold that other player might have. It could be also reputation points because these reputation points are also equal to each other. Um, these, these have, they have the same, exactly the same value. So this is where you, when you use ERC20. And this, this is the most popular standard in Ethereum. Um, you can you can use it to implement a token in your game, and um, you have to think of a use case. If you have a good use case, then then you should impl then you should implement uh, then you should create a token in your game. But as I said, examples like uh, a, a game currency or skills or reputation points in your game uh, would be a good use case. If we take a look at the actual Solidity interface of the standard, it's quite simple. And actually, all these standards are simple because they were envisioned to, to be simple. Um, to, so they have like a minimum interface for, for other people because uh, it's, it's also hard to agree on something complex and it's 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 easier to agree on a smaller subset uh, of functions. So ERC20, the standard itself was created in 2015. So it's it's already some time. And um, let's let's talk about the actual functions in the Solidity interface. So we have name, which is a full name of your token. Then you have a symbol of the token, which is usually three or four letters representing your token. Then you have decimals. So most, most tokens in Ethereum ecosystem use 18 decimals. And decimals mean uh, what fraction of the token you can transfer to, to someone else. Because you, if you have like, for example, 18 decimals, you can transfer one divided by 10 to the power of 18 of your token to someone else. Then you have total supply, which is just a function to get a total supply of your token, which means like how many tokens were minted. Were minted. Then you have balance of that you can use to check the balance. Uh, for example, you have a player and uh, he has some gold and you would use this balance of function to get the amount of gold that this person has. Then you have transfer and transfer from functions. And the difference between transfer and transfer from is transfer assumes that the person, that uh, that the from address is uh, the person who's calling the transfer function. But if you use transfer from, you can pass the, the address from which the tokens will be transferred. And it means that you can transfer, that someone else can transfer your tokens on your behalf. But it can only happen if you call a proof function, which is the next function in the standard. And uh, you approve how, how many tokens can a third party spend on your behalf. And this third party could be external account. So it could be someone else, or it could be also a smart contract. So it could be a game smart contract, for example. Um, yeah. Allowance function is used to check the allowance, like how much, how many tokens did you approve for someone else to spend on your behalf? And then we have events in this uh, ERC20 standard. So events are emitted each time um, they happen. They are emitted by a smart contract. So for example, in your game, you could implement a WebSocket subscription to get transfer function 
to get transfer events. And each time the transfer event happens, you can update balances in your game. So most of the tokens out there are ERC20 tokens. It's it's not every every single one of them, but I, a lot of tokens are ERC20, and they actually live on Ethereum. You can go to coinmarketcap.com to to see the list of the tokens, but it's like probably thousands of them, and yeah, I think most of them are ERC20. So it's very, very popular standard. Example of ERC20 token in game is, for example, AXS. And this is a token that has been implemented by Axie Infinity. And they use it for staking. So they use it for staking, for paying other people, and also for governance. And using ERC20 tokens for governance is really interesting because you can imagine that, for example, you can you distribute this ERC20 token to your players and then you introduce a proposal and they can vote on it. So example proposal could be, do you want to introduce a new map to the game? And then you let your players vote. And let's say if... 50% or 51% of your players or your players voted in favor of the proposal, then this proposal passes. OK, so let's. it's enough of talking about ERC20. Let's talk about ERC721 now. So ERC721 is a standard for NFTs. It's the most popular standard for NFTs. And NFT means non-fungible token, which means that each token is unique. And you cannot simply exchange one NFT with another NFT because they have different value. So it's not like gold where you can trade them one-to-one -one because it's exactly the same currency. This is... This is more like everything is unique. So you can have a sword that is very common, but then you have a sword in your game, which is super rare. And would you trade them? Um, would, you, would you exchange them like one-to-one? -one? I don't think so, because they have different value. So this is where NFT comes in. And this is a way how you can represent these different, these unique tokens. So we already talked that you can use NFTs for items in your game, but also probably even more popular use case is to use NFTs to represent characters in your game. There's a lot of collections, like where you mind, uh, where you mind like different apes, like animals, and each animal has a different degree of rarity, has different statistics. And then people flex these NFTs, like who has NFT that is more rare uh, on their Twitter accounts or in some games, uh, etc. So if we look at the code of the NFT standard and we compare it to ERC20, then you can see it's quite similar. The only difference here that you should know when you begin working with ERC20 and ERC721 is that in, in NFT, if you call these functions like, um, like approve or transfer, then you have to pass token ID because token ID is a way to differentiate between different tokens. Like as we said, each NFT is unique, and this uniqueness is represented with unique identifiers. So the most popular marketplace for NFTs, and a good way to check like what people are doing with NFTs 
is to actually go to OpenSea.io. And you can take some inf inspiration from here and see what people are doing. So for example, this is some collection where people create characters. And yeah, the different character has probably different rarity, uh, et cetera. But another good example is if we go back to this XC infinity example, you have creatures where each creature has different statistics, different rarity probably. And uh, yeah, this is what people are using NFTs for. And this is how you can use them as well in your game. So now let's talk about ERC-1155. So ERC-1155 is efficient way to handle, to handle both ERC-20 and ERC-721 in the same contract. Um, Example that you can imagine is you have both fungible and non-fungible tokens in your game. So, I mean, not fungible and non-fungible items in your game. And you can imagine that you have like a very common sword that anyone can have and it's very popular and it could be fungible and because each sword is, you can exchange it to other sword and they have the same value. But on the other hand, you can have like very rare sort that is unique and you and has unique statistics, and you don't want to exchange this for like any other sort. You don't want it to be equal to like any other sort. That's where you can use NFT uh, to represent it. Uh, so if if you use this ERC one one five five standard, uh, we can we can go back to these ERCs. Yeah, and, and here, if you go to uh, this ERC's repository on ethereum.org, then uh, you can see the motivation uh, for creation the standard. And, and basically, the problem that it solves is if you have both, if you'd have both ERC20 and ERC721 tokens in your game, you'd need to have like separate contract for them. But actually, if you use ERC1155, then you have more flexibility because you can implement it both in you can implement both ERC20 and ERC721 uh, tokens in the same smart contract. And also you can implement many of them in one smart contract. You're not limited to having just one token using the standard at this address, but your smart contract can handle multiple different uh, tokens, and they can be fungible and non-fungible at the same time. The other interesting thing that was uh, introduced, that was introduced uh, in the standard is batch transfers. So it's actually pretty cool because uh, you don't, so if you want to do batch transfers for ERC20 or Batch transfer means you want to do multiple transfers from multiple different accounts to multiple receivers in one blockchain transaction. And you can do it with ERC20 and you can do it with ERC721, but you need to have another smart contract that will batch these functions together. But in ERC1155, actually you can use the function that's already built in into the standard and it's called uh, save, save batch transfer from, and using this function you can you can do these batch transfers easily. So yeah, this is interface of ERC one one five five, and these are actually all functions. So as you can see, it's also pretty similar to. ERC721 and ERC20. 
it also has balance functions, uh, approval functions, and also transfer function. As we already said, the addition here is that you also have a safe batch transfer function. And you also use IDs to represent this different tokens. So um, let's take a look at actual code example. So actually, if you want to use any of the, these token standards that we have talked here, uh, that we talked about today, whether you want to use ERC-20 or ERC-721 or ERC-1155, the good place to start is to go to open Zeppelin slash contracts and uh, just use it as a as a base for your smart contracts because they have uh, a lot of like example implementations for these tokens and it's the easiest way to just like go there clone the repository it's open source and uh, and use it as a starting point for your for your smart contracts so here we have example of game items that is inheriting from ERC-1155 contract from Open Zeppelin contracts repository. And at the top of this contract, uh, we declare the IDs for our ERC, for our tokens. So because you can have multiple tokens, which are both like fungible and non-fungible, each token uh, has a different ID. So, so this is important because later, if you work with these tokens in your game, then you need to reference them, reference them by the ID um, that you assigned to them when you were minting new tokens. So actually, here, if you call mint functions, these IDs are assigned are assigned automatically. So the first time you mint the the first token will have id zero then the second time you mind something with a different total supply uh, you have uh, you have one etc etc and here coming back to this uh, game example we have gold which is a fungible token and uh, as you can see it has a big total supply you also have sword which also has pretty big supply it's probably a common sword in a game. Same goes for shield, but you have Thor's hammer and there's only one Thor's hammer in a game. So this is uh, an NFT. It's a unique, it's unique. There's only one uh, in the whole game. So so it's it can be represented uh, as NFT. And yeah, this smart contract, this ERC-1155 standard is very efficient because you can mix both fungible and non-fungible tokens. So, so you can think if you want to choose uh, this ERC-1155 standard instead of implement, instead of creating multiple ERC-20 and ERC-721 smart contracts. And you can also remember that if you take this implement, take this example implementation, you can still override all these other functions and change how they work. And the same goes for, for ERC721. You can also override these functions. And same goes for ERC20. And that's what people are actually doing. They take this ERC20, um, but then they override a lot of functions that they add new methods to the standard. Um, and this is how they create the, the custom mechanism. So maybe they can introduce a custom way of minting the token, um, different ways of distribution, different ways how you can use the token. Uh, people also create mechanisms to burn the token, so the value of the so the token is more scarce and it has a bigger value. So all these different things. I won't talk too much about tokenomics. Uh, tokenomics today, but uh, you you can think of it when you create your game design. So so maybe these tokens are, are scarce and, and some other tokens are common. Uh, maybe you can have like multiple types of currency uh, in your game, basically 
um, you have to think of the use cases, how, to, how you want to use these tokens, and you will find a lot of examples also on the internet. So example application that is using ERC-1155 standard is Skyweaver. And this is like Hearthstone. So this is like a card game where um, the cards in the actual game are represented with this ERC-1155 standard. And yeah, as I already said before, go to Open Zeppelin, Open Zeppelin contracts in on GitHub and you will find a lot of example implementations and it will take you like five or 10 minutes to create your first ERC-20 or ERC-721 or ERC-1155 tokens. Um, this code is very simple. Just um, just try to, to play with it, experiment with it and see what comes out of it. So that was it. Um, please join our community. Uh, you can go to discord.gg slash nervous, find the DevChat channel if you have any questions, or you can also go to blogjam specific um, Discord or Discord channels and we'll answer your questions. And these questions could be about token standards as well. And yeah, we'll try to help you so you can create your game. Thank you so much for listening and uh, good luck in blogjam hackathon.